Welcome to the next podcast by your authority on portfolio program and project management. I'm Wanda Curley, and I'm here today in San Diego, and it's a beautiful day, although it started as rainy. Um, so before we get going, uh, in the past, I've talked about EARNOP, which is the International Research Network on Organizing by Projects. It is a loosely knit organization of project managers that are that do research in project management. So you'll have project managers, you'll have academics, uh, you'll have practitioners that want to write a an academic paper, and they present. Uh, they have a conference every year. So I wanted to talk a little bit about them. So EarnUp actually does have their own conferences. Their next conference is in Melbourne, Australia. So if you're interested in going to Melbourne, Australia, I highly recommend it. They always do their conferences at a university to bring down the cost to the membership and to uh, those that want to attend. Um, they normally do it in Europe, but they are trying to move around a little bit. As you can see, they're doing it here in Australia. Um, so it's in December from the 9th to 12th, so you've got a plenty of time to save up your money to go there. If you want more information on this conference, go to www.earnop2018.org. If you want to get on EARNOP's mail list, which I highly recommend, uh, there is you go to this website, which is www.earnop.org, and you just click on mail list and you'll be put on their mail list. Um, again, I highly recommend it because you'll get information that you won't get from other sources. This is, I don't want to call it a competitor to the PMI academic arm, but they do work in conjunction sometimes, um, but they do offer a different set of there's academics that participate in both, but you'll get a different flavor of papers at ERNOP. So what, uh, let me tell you about ERNOP. ERNOP was founded in 1993, and I'm going to read from their uh, website here. It's a loosely coupled network of researchers and have developed from there, adding researchers in countries all over the world. As you can see, they're going to Melbourne. And the ERNOP network connects scholars with backgrounds in business, economics, engineering, and other fields. In other words, ERNOP brings academics from all different fields, not just project management. So I highly recommend that you go to EARNOP and look at their uh, information, get on their mail list, and then you'll be able to download some of their uh, information um, and, and the papers from researchers and understand project management from a different venue. So you'll also get social scientists here, those that do psychology, those that do sociology. Also, EARNOP is available at LinkedIn. So go to the LinkedIn group for EARNOP, and you'll find a whole lot of discussions going out there. Um, my friend, Terry Williams, is the, heading up the EARNOP this, this year. So please go out there and talk to him. Tell him that Wanda Curley sent you, and, and he'll be giving you more advice than you probably would ever know. So Dr. Williams is great. So now that we've gone to EARNOP, let's look at what's going on in the news about project management. So, um, in project management, uh, I did, again, a search on project management. Um, I did it both on Google, and I did it both on um, uh, Edge. And I, when I did project management, I did the search, and then I went to news. So you can find this today, but remember, I am your, um, your expert and um, authority on all of this. So if you don't have the time to go out, just listen to what I have to say for you. So the first one we're going to go to is um, is um, uh, it's called Bureau Veritas. So Bureau Veritas just joined. Uh, let me find it here. Uh, Bureau Veritas just joined um, uh, and acquired EMG. Why is this important is because Bureau Veritas is expanding building and infrastructure's technical assessment. So what is it? Um, founded in 1986, EMG 
offers clients a broad range of services around the life cycle of their facilities, including engineering and environmental assessments. They do a lot in the project management area. When I was doing government, I ran into EMG all the time. And so with Bureau Veritas buying them out, now Bureau Veritas has this uh, project management arm and they'll be able to expand into the government networks. And I'm guessing that's why they did it because EMG offers a lot for the government. Okay, uh, that, that article was uh, provided by Bureau Veritas, so they put it out on the web, and it's in Sissian PR Newswire. So let's go to the next thing. So in management today, there's a article called How to Launch Your Career in Project Management. I found this a very interesting article. It is written for people in the UK, but there's stuff that in, that's in here that can help you become a better project manager and figure out how to get into project management if you have a desire to do so. So it describes what is project management and it talks about your first steps. For this one, they talk about getting your prints too. That is the methodology that is used in England and in other countries in, the, in, in Europe and the EU to, um, do project management. They also have a program management. So uh, they recommend taking a course in Prince2 and then going ahead and getting your certification. Um, you have to demonstrate professional standards. So once you are getting there, you, they recommend that you join PMI or that you join APM, uh, which is the Association of Project Managers. Um, that's good here in the United States. If you're trying to get into project management, I highly recommend that you join a chapter of PMI. So first you would have to go to PMI, join them, and then um, you can go to chapter meetings. Um, you will have to, if you go to the meetings and you're not a member of that chapter, you will have to pay a little extra fee. But if you find that they are helpful, then join that chapter as well. You have to embrace technology. Um, Almost every section of, of project management has some type of project of technology. And going, uh, going into the future, we're going to be seeing Internet of Things taking over project management. We're going to be seeing uh, artificial intelligence taking over. In fact, I've given talks on that where um, you'll be able to talk to a Google or to a Siri and say, hey, Siri, tell me what the latest risks are on my project. Can you imagine that? that it takes in the artificial intelligence and understands how you know, how you think. So it takes risks from other perspectives so you don't tunnel into just the way you think. Instead, it broadens it out for you. Um, so those are come, some of the things that they, uh, they mentioned that you should do. And I think they are very, very good. Now, to one that I found very, very troubling. Very troubling. So P&G's Pritchard, who is the chief, let me find his title here. Um, he is the chief brand manager at PNG. And he says, uh, the title is PNG's Pritchard says industry needs more brand entrepreneurs and fewer project managers. Oh my gosh, I am so, so mad about this because he is totally out of touch. He says project managers are not creative and, and, and that they're too much on process. Well, yes, project managers do have some process, but project managers can be some of the most creative people in the, in the world. And they can also make your projects so creative too, if they understand how to do that. And some other talks that I have given is on neuroscience and understanding how our brain thinks. There's three ways that we think. And if this Pritchard guy thinks that project managers are passe, where has he been? Because all the research says we need more project managers. Now, I don't mean project managers that are only focused on process. I mean creative, wonderful thinking, forward thinking project managers. And there are a lot of those in the world. So... My, hats are, my hat is not off to Pritchard, and I would like to have him on this show so that we can have him one-on-one -on -one because I think I can beat him down. So let's go to the next article, which I think is a little bit better. If you're at a church, especially a medium to large or mega-sized church, you need project management software. And so there's a good little article by Deborah Ike. Um, that was that she wrote in multi briefs exclusive and it talks about different 
uh, softwares that a church could use to help them with their projects. Now, one thing I want to say, and one thing that she's very astute on, is these churches should, should not buy project management software to solve all of their issues, because that will not happen. Software is not a silver bullet, and many Fortune 500 companies have realized that and have fallen into that trap. So if you are a church and you are looking at project management software, please do your research. Bring in a project manager. I'm sure there are project managers in your uh, congregation that would be more than willing to help you find what is needed. If you don't have a project manager, then I'm sure you have a business analyst that can help you out as well. Uh, but some of the ones she talks about are Asana. Sorry, I can't help you out. I haven't heard of that one. Basecamp is a good one. I've actually used that. It's, it's a fairly good and decent um, project management software. She also talks about Trello. Trello is more of a communication software, and it could help you with project management. So again, she talks about don't buy project management software to uh, solve all your problems, because it will not. You still have to have processes in place. And if you don't, it will fall apart. Um, so that was that one there. Um, another one that I would like to talk about is um, Project Management Institute just came out with their new um, PM network. And there's a lot of good information in there. So I'm just going to pull out a little bit of things. I'm not talking about any of the articles. There are some good articles in there. They're talking about urban sprawl and stuff. So if you're interested in that kind of stuff, I would recommend it. But they have little tidbits that I thought were amazing. So intelligent investments, they're talking about smart cities. And they said the projected value in two, 2021 is for global smart cities to be at $775 billion. Yes, that's a billion with a B. The value of the market in 2016, so that was two years ago, was $342 billion. So if you're into smart cities, this is the place to be. There's a lot of activity going on here. So the compounded annual growth of smart city market from 2016 to 2021 is expected to increase by 17.7%. Can you believe that? 17.7%. So in North America, it's projected that the share of global smart city investments, as they call it by PMI, is $245 billion by 2021. That is amazing to me. So the three biggest cities that are involving smart city projects are um, in the United States. I don't know about worldwide, but in the United States is New York, New York. Los, Al Los Angeles, California, and Chicago, Illinois. And we know that Chicago needs it with all the uh, inf infrastructure problems that they're having. The budget of mega projects proposed by the government of Saudi Arabia in October to build its new city powered entirely by renewable energies is $500 billion. Think of all the project managers that you need there. Just think, that, that is amazing to me. So let me scroll here to, there's also a huge article on what smart cities are all about. So let me scroll here to find some other information that I found quite interesting. And this has to do with um, Uber. Um, so Volvo and Uber are on schedule to develop and manufacture up to 24,000 24, self-driving taxis by 2021. Another great industry to be in. Um, every industry in India um, is expecting, it says, Ever Ready Industries in India, a battery manufacturer for more than 75 years is looking to uh, spend $150 billion on global appliances that need a market share. So they're looking to put batteries in all these different things. And one of the pictures here is an iron. They have a uh, blender. They have a microwave. Can you imagine a microwave uh, being run on um, batteries? I think that's amazing to me. Uh, let's see. Let's find some other things here. There's also talk about... Uh, bike paths. 
bike paths are going up all over the United States. Um, it, the de demand for uh, bicycles uh, uh, is 1.3 bicycles per capita. So per person, they're expecting 1.3 bikes per person. I know my own son, who's a cyclist, he owns 13 bikes, and they're not cheap bikes. Um, there's 22.5 million bicycles right now in the United States. There's more than 25,000, um, I'm sorry, more than 25% of the population who ride bicycles to work. To me, that's amazing. I would love to ride a bicycle to work. Um, and it's estimated that in, um, that, let's see, estimated average distance each Dutch person cycles per year is 1,000 kilometers or 621 miles. And I apologize. I thought this was for the United States. It's not. It's for the Netherlands. So we, hey, you guys here in the United States, we need to get to that. Um, to those numbers here in the United States. So what are some of the things that are happening in the United States? Um, so raising expectations. There's a whole article here on what happens if you don't use pro project management in your industry. Again, I go to the P&G and that chief brand manager saying that we shouldn't be using project management. So 9.9% .9 of every dollar is wasted because of poor project management. Do you know that's $99 million for every billion dollars of project? That is unsurmountable to me. I, I just can't put my head around that. So if, if we would actually do project management correctly, and I've come up with a model that shows a way of doing uh, projects at least 60% of the time better, because right now we only have successful projects about 25% of the time. Can you imagine how much money we would save? So 52%, according to the uh, PMI's um, network um, magazine, says that 52% of projects experience scope creep. 52%. Can you imagine scope creep on 52%? That's an increase from 49% in 2017 and 43% in 2014. That is horrible, folks. Project managers, get on the stick. I know we can't stop it, but we need to control it more. 33% of champions um, projects and 69% of underperformer projects experience scope creep. That is horrible to me. Uh, so if you are on a championed project, only 33% uh, experienced scope creep. But if you didn't have a champion project, 69%. Again, that's horrible. So maturity matters also, they say here. 31% of organizations prioritize developing comprehensive value delivery capabilities. 87% of champions have high value delivery capabilities ma maturity compared to 5% of underperformers. So let's go on and look at executive management. Having actively engaged ex executive sponsors for your top driven projects, and in fact, I think it should be on all projects. So 62% proportion of projects that have actively engaged executive sponsors do well. And this has happened six years in a row. Say 26% of organizations say that inadequate sponsor supports in the primary cause of failed project. Again, we need project managers that insist on having a champion for your project. In other words, this is telling me stay away from projects that don't have champions. Um, so let's go the full spectrum. Uh, organizations that frequently draw on full spectrum of delivery approaches, uh, so predictive, uh, which is waterfall, agile, and hybrid, see better outcomes. Um, so they said that uh, those that always or often do meet goals are 73%, are on budget, 63% are on time, 59%. That's not great numbers. Those that rarely or never do meet goals or intent are 58% are on budget or that rarely meet their budget are 48% and rarely meet times or schedule is 43%. So we can see that project management, it needs to come a long way. We need to drive better things. So what are the advantages of having a PMO? 
uh, project management office. Now, we have to define PMO. You can have PMO on a project. You can have PMO in an organization. And this is for an organization. So 85% of organizations' project management office establish and monitor project success metrics, up from 70%. So that's good. 80% of champion organizations have PMOs. So 80% of the projects that have champions, there's a PMO that they can go to, and that's excellent. 72% of the champions have enterprise PMOs highly aligned with organizational strategy. That's another thing that is brought out in this, is that you need to have your project aligned with the strategy. If you do not have your project aligned with the strategy, you are looking for failure. And failure, and I mean projects down at the tactical level, need to be able to go through the business goals and up to um, the strategy of an organization. If your project is not due to a, a legal requirement or a regulation requirement, it better align to a business strategy. Um, the reason I say that is because sometimes you have, because of your industry, you're required to do some legal or regulation type projects, and those should align to organizational um, and business drivers, because if you're that industry, then you should be um, rel relying and doing the ethical thing and going by regulations and laws. So again, um, strategy matters even at the tactical level. Um, so again, don't forget to always understand what the strategy is. Make sure you communicate that to your organization, your project management organization. Ask if you don't know what your strategy is, and your champion should be able to tell you. So without further ado, I would like you to log in to www.pmcurrentnos.com, subscribe to my YouTube channel, subscribe to my LinkedIn, my Facebook, and my Twitter. And again, the Chief Brand Manager, this is a shout out to you. I'd like to get you onto this podcast because I'd like to hear your perspective of why you don't want project managers. Um, remember, also, if you don't agree with me on other things, please contact me. I'd love to have you on this podcast. I'd also love to have you if you're on a project manager uh, of a very interesting project. Please contact me. My uh, email is Wanda at pmpowered.com. That's P O W E R E D.com. Um, again, I really look forward to hearing from you, and I look forward to talking to you again next week. Stay tuned.